Hi there! Hillary here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. This is the fourth episode of Cold Water Curiosities. Now, in the first episode, I talked about barnacles. The second one was about mussels, and the third was about limpets. Something really interesting happened when I was out here filming that video about limpets. I put in the tank what I thought was a sponge, but it turned out not to be a sponge at all. And it is going to be the topic of today's video. So grab a snack, maybe a pen and paper if you want to take notes, and I'll see you right back here in just a second. that creature that I was telling you about that I thought was a sponge and I put in my tank during the limpet video was actually a type of dorid. Now to be specific, it is a Monterey lemon dorid. Yep, I said dorid, not dory like the fish. Dorid as in the nudibranch. There are thousands of species of nudibranch worldwide and approximately 2,000 of those are considered dorids. But since we're in the Pacific Northwest, let's stick to the ones that are up here. Now, again, there's about 200 species of nudibranchs in the Pacific Northwest, and 34 of those are considered dorids. So this particular one that we're looking at today and most of the others in this suborder Doridina are called bushy gill nudibranchs based on their anatomy. I mentioned a second ago that in their description they can be described as bushy gills and that's very apparent when you look at them as they are fully extended. I don't know about you but when I think about gills typically I associate those with the front of a fish's body. Well nudibranchs are a little bit different because their gills or their brachial plume is located near their anus. Now when I first put the nudibranch in the tank, the reason I thought it was a sponge is because that brachial plume was retracted and pulled almost all the way in. It wasn't until I observed it hanging out and being relaxed in the tank for a while that I saw those extend. And the same thing can be said for the rhinophores, which are at the front end of its body. These are also retractable. They are sensory projections that, like some of the other species we've talked about, are able to detect light. And again, this was very evident as I was observing this dorid because it would retract those and pull it in when I moved around it, sensing perhaps a predator was near. Something else that's interesting about these dorids is they have all of these little uh, lumps and bumps that are all over their body. Some of those are tubercles, but others are these little finger-like projections that can offer additional help with respiration and, like those colored spots, help it to blend in with its environment. Dorids are hermaphrodites and will actually lay egg ribbons. You can a lot of times spot these if you look close. The Monterey sea lemon eggs in particular are a wide yellow colored ribbon of eggs and each of the different species of dorids has slightly different variations on this. I know that the Monterey sea lemon gets to about six inches in length so the one that I had was nearly full grown but the average size of most dorids can range anywhere from three quarters of an inch all the way up to nine inches. It's a pretty sizable nudibranch. One source I found said that the average nudibranch lives between one and three years, so these really aren't that long-lived of a species. Let's say you want to go out looking for dorids to find your own. Now, if you're specifically looking for the Monterey sea lemon, these guys can be found from Alaska all the way down to San Diego. You can look for them on or under rocks from the intertidal zone, up where I found mine, down to depths of 165 feet. It's pretty deep. On average though, if you search from the inner tidal down to about 75 or 100 feet, you should be able to at least find one or two different dorids. But one key in looking for them is to locate their food source. The diet of most dorids is sponges, but the specific type of sponge is dependent on the species of dorid. 
For example, the Monterey sea lemon eats many types of sponges, but especially you can find it in areas that has a high concentration of breadcrumb sponges. While sponges make up a vast majority of the diet for dorids, it's not just limited to sponges. You can also find them eating things like bryozoans. Because of the food they eat, they have a high bioaccumulation of toxins, so they really don't have that many predators. One of the things I love about filming these videos is I always am learning something new. And the thing that was really surprising and new that I learned about dorids is with respect to their diet. Dorids eat sponges, and that might not seem that interesting, but if you take a close look at the anatomy of a sponge, you'll see that they're made up of all of these really sharp interlocking pieces called spicules. And eating them is actually no small feat, especially when you consider what's eating them is also a kind of soft, squishy, mucousy blob. When I'm making these videos, I like to try and tie it back into the aquarium hobby to make it relatable, besides just the tank that I used, which for the record is a P&W Custom small-in-one one-gallon tank. If you're interested, Saltwater Aquarium does sell these on the website if you want to get one for your own observational purposes or to set up a nano tank definitely recommend checking it out. This is such a fun journey with this small tank. But back to my point is that I'm struggling to connect and relate dorids to the aquarium hobby because honestly, I don't see people keeping them in tanks for good reason. They're a cold water species. Most people don't have cold water tanks. And beyond that, they typically eat a diet of things that we don't have for them in our systems. So it makes sense that we wouldn't see them. But if you are interested, the very close relatives are snails. And I guarantee you that each of you have snails in your tank. If you don't already, I would highly recommend it. Get several of them. So on that note, I am going to conclude this video. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Doras as much as I have. I can't wait until the next episode of Cold Water Curiosities. I really have no idea what I'm going to find and I always love being surprised. I hope that you follow along for the journey. I look forward to seeing you next time. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.